Now to a story getting a lot of attention now. I want to take you down to the Tar Heel State, North Carolina Senate Committee, passing a bill that bans males from female sports. And our next guest has quite a story. She's a high school girls volleyball player. She's been urging lawmakers to take action after she suffered a concussion and a neck injury back in September from a transgender player spiking the ball during a volleyball game. I could go on and on about how this incident has affected my life, but I'm not here for that because I'm not here for me. Allowing biological males to compete against biological females is dangerous. Well, I'm going to bring in Peyton McNabb, the woman you see there on screen and here in person. Mm -hmm. Welcome to New York. Thank you. You're Thank from you. Murphy, North Carolina. We've been Carolina. waiting for you. Yeah, you're in the far <laughs> western part of the state. First time on an airplane. Mm -hmm. First time <laughs> to New York City. You're, you're living life. Back on the 1st of September, I've seen the video. You took a shot. It's hard for me to watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you remember from that? Um, I just remember the very, very silent and shocked gym after it happened. My, I remember the fear from my teammates, knowing that they would have to continue to play the game um, even after that incident happened. Mm -hmm. I just remember everyone just so not knowing what to do, and it was just very, very traumatizing. What was your recovery like? It was hard. It was very. It's very slow. Um, it's been. It's been very difficult. You know, not being able to get back into things yeah. as I have in the past. So it's been very difficult. But thankfully, I'm. I'm improving. Did Did, did you know immediately when when it happened? Like, did you know you were playing against a transgender? Yes, we did. Okay. So and then that happens. And had had you been concerned about the strength of this individual before the game? Yes, okay. very much so, but we we couldn't just refuse the game since it was a conference game, so we had to continue to play them, even though none of us wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, so it was definitely... So, so during warm-ups, right, you're checking out the other team. They're mm -hmm. on the other side of the court. What, what, what did you see, and what, what did you think of that player's performance? It was obviously a lot different than what we've been seeing the rest of the season or the rest of the years I've been playing. I was very used to it, though, at that point, okay. because he's the same age as me, so we played together all four years against oh. them. Um, but I just remember seeing how, like, the fear, and especially our younger players on the team who've never played against them before. Wow. So just seeing how scared they were, it was really heartbreaking. Did you hear from that individual afterwards? I hadn't heard from them at all until, like, a week after I spoke out for the first time. They sent me a message on Instagram, and it was very, it was very hateful. There's no remorse at all, and um, so you like angry towards you for for saying something that yes. biological males should not be allowed to play against fem in, in female sports. Yes. Well, the state house has taken action, and now the mm -hmm. Senate looks like it will as well. But you got a Democratic governor, Roy Cooper. Mm -hmm. um, do you think he would agree with the lawmakers in the state house to ban? No, definitely not. He. He definitely will not agree with this whole mm. situation. So everyone's already expecting that. You, you, um, you, you know it's a topic of national conversation. It came up at the White House the other day, and here was the question and answer from there. What would the president say to parents out there who have daughters, uh, let's say in high school, for example, who are worried that their daughter may have to compete against a male and worry about their daughter's safety? That is a dangerous thing to say, that essentially transgender kids we're talking about are dangerous. I know you're in high school. Uh, I grant you that. But uh, what do you think about a comment like that, saying it's dangerous after what you experienced? Um, I think it's very, very hypocritical. I think she's taken what others have said about how this is dangerous for us, and she's essentially switched it around and played the victim from mm -hmm. the situation, which I've, I expect nothing less from that whole administration. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I just want to end with this question because I noticed that you said that you, you're not here in New York for yourself and you didn't speak out for yourself. Tell us why you are doing this. Why does this matter to you? So I'm doing this because I don't want anyone else to have to ever go through what I went through. Um, and even the thought of it happening to my younger sister who's going into high school or, you know, my other family members, my teammates, if that happened to any of them, it would just infuriate me. So just the thought of that, and I just don't think this is something that we should even have to be talking about. So. Well, it's not resolved yet. No. Yeah. And it may not be. No. Nope. But you're a part of the 
an, an attempt at a solution. And Peyton, we thank you for being here, and we thank your dad hey, for nice being to here too. You. Happy nice. Father's Day to you, sir. Yeah. All right. Pops is over in the corner. Yeah. Over there. All right. Thank, thank you, Peyton. Thank you, Peyton. Good thank luck. you for having me.